I think the players see that whenever we're all around together, that uh, family is really important and he wants them to have that same relationship with their family. The culture that he breeds, it, it's so fantastic. You just enjoy being at work. It is a family, he respects us as men, and that goes a long way for when we're out in the football field. He's a great coach, he's a great player, but I think even better, I think he's a good person. You know, we build that chemistry, that camaraderie that you need to go out and play well as a group, and that's something that, you know, it really starts at the top with Coach Rivera. Family, for a young Ron Rivera, was on Army bases around the world. His father was a career military man, 32 years in places like Heidelberg, Germany, and Panama, before settling at Fort Ord in California. And each one of those moves, the thing that was our, 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 our entryway into the community was sports whether it be football, basketball, or baseball. Um, and that's how, you, that's how you, you assimilated to the community. With four boys, there was always a lot of competition. There was always a lot of competing. And so you always wanted to be good. And, and what, uh, I've said this before, my first teammates, uh, best teammates were my brothers. I had uh, opportunities to go to USC and UCLA. I, I was recruited by Ohio State and Michigan and Notre Dame. I knew I was gonna stay home. Uh, I, I, I just wanted the opportunity for them to be, be close and watch me play. And so it was off to Cal, where Rivera became an All-American linebacker. But memories of his college days aren't confined to what he accomplished on the field. Probably the greatest thing that happened was I met my wife there. You know, Stephanie was, a, was an undergrad as well. Probably the thing that made it stick more so than anything else was she had no idea who I was. And uh, so it just made me chase her even harder. You know, after going out for a couple times, we just, you know, we hit it off. It was really obvious from the, the get-go. And so we started dating in August and by Christmas we were engaged. He starts playing and I'm like, wow, he's good. <laughs> you know, I had no clue. Better than good, ending his career at Cal as their all-time sax leader. While the Bears struggled during his time there, Rivera did witness one of the most famous plays in college football history, with Cal trailing Stanford by one with four seconds left. With Joe Cap, there was it was never over. I know, you know, Richard Rogers got into the hole, told the guys, hey, you know, just keep the ball alive, you know, just keep the ball alive. I was the special teams captain at the time. I like to tell people it was my first coaching job. You know, I went into a huddle. And I, um, and I told my teammates, it's not over. I'm running to the end zone and through the band myself trying to get to Kevin. And then we heard the cannon go off and we knew that we had won. And, and, and Joe Starkey's you know, call of the game, you hear him talk about the bands on the field. He, they were. It ain't over till it's over. Coach Cap came up with this little, the bear not, will not quit, the bear will not die. And uh, that's pretty much what came out of it. Rivera was a consensus first team All-American as a senior in 1983, and was later drafted in the second round by the Chicago Bears, a team that was loaded with personalities. It was the first kind of rock star football team. This football team had a cast of characters. Everything started with the head coach. It really did. Mike Dicka was the ringleader. I mean, he knew how to orchestrate things. He knew how to work things. Jim McMahon, Walter Payton, Mike Singletary, and William Refrigerator Perry. 11 All Pros in 1985 when the Bears won the Super Bowl. It was amazing. The thing that was probably the most impressive thing too was the calm and the confidence on the sideline, almost a cockiness. And when the game was over, you know, they, they hoisted Coach Dick up, they hoisted Buddy Ryan, and, and, and we walked off the field and into the locker room. It was amazing to watch, you know, how the guys just celebrated. The Bears won six NFC Central Division titles in Rivera's nine years. After retiring, he spent four years in the media before his wife convinced him to get back on the field. She's the one who got me to, to, to get back into football. She told me one day, she says, you know, you, you, you don't have the structure, you don't have the discipline that you need. You, you need to really think about it. And so I just, I went all in. And, uh, you know, I, was, I would get there at 6, 6.15 in the morning. I'd make coffee. I'd make all the copies for whatever needed to be on Coach Sloak's desk ready to go. I would go pick up lunch for the coaches. I'd get cars washed for coaches. I mean, I did whatever I could do. I had to make myself so valuable 
so needed that they weren't going to send me away. 14 years, Rivera was an assistant coach with the Bears, Philadelphia, and San Diego before realizing his dream in 2011. I was fired up. I was excited. I, 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 want, I was looking forward to the challenge. I couldn't wait to tell Stephanie. She's as big a part of this as anything because she's been there more so than anybody else. It was a challenging start for Rivera as the Panthers struggled in their first two seasons. Rumors swirled around Rivera's job as he sat down with team owner Jerry Richardson. He told me, I think you need a mentor, so I want you to call John Madden. I called Coach Madden, we go out, we sit down, we talk. I didn't, le I didn't reach out enough to other people too. You know, I thought I could do it all. You, know, you got this book and you know that you have. That was one of the lessons I learned from Coach Madden too, was there is no book, there is no guiding book that's gonna tell you exactly how to do things. Uh, one of the things he told me that really made sense was, you know, Ron, you've played enough football, you've coached enough football that you know. There was a different feeling during the 2013 season. Fans were seeing a few more gambles, earning Rivera a new nickname, Riverboat Ron. I didn't want people to think I was just going out there willy-nilly, because I wasn't. And so I really started analyzing, thinking about things, trying to decide what was the best way to do things. I mean, I really, truly was thinking about the situation in the game. I was going by my gut, like Coach Madden had suggested a couple of times. And what I realized, it made me realize that by doing certain things, certain making certain decisions, I was telling the players, hey man, I believe in you guys. I trust you guys. I know you're gonna get this done. I know you can do it. The Panthers won the NFC South the next two years and looked to be primed for a run to the Super Bowl in 2015. But the Riveras had to deal with two personal tragedies before the season even started. Their house was heavily damaged by a fire in January. No one was injured, but they were forced to move out of the house for seven months. Then, Rivera's older brother, Mickey, died from pancreatic cancer. From the time I, Mickey called me to tell me he had cancer, uh, to the time he passed, um, I was learning from Mickey. Mickey never complained. Mickey never woes me type of deal. Being his older brother, he looked up to him. And just to watch him deal with the, with the, the illness, he was, always, he was always really strong. And so that was important for Ron to see. It's not an easy situation to deal with, but I think that when we saw him have strength and, and deal with it the way he did, it also made us stronger as a unit and as a family, as a team. One of the things that, that still sticks with me was, you know, the last time I saw Mickey, you know, and, and he was upbeat, he was positive. Um, you know, I was, I was headed back here for training camp and Mickey, you know, he just told me, hey, good luck, Ron, I know you guys can win it this year. And it was interesting because I, I, I believed it too. Carolina started 15-0 and and won the NFC Championship. Fans across the Carolinas were believing too. It was on to the Super Bowl, which was being played in Santa Clara, California, not far from Rivera's hometown. But this homecoming was spoiled as the Denver Broncos took home the Vince Lombardi Trophy. I, I know it hurts as a player, um, but I really believe as a, as a coach, it hurts even more because you have so much more time vested in it. Last year, the Panthers struggled through a 6-10 and ten season but have reloaded for 2017. The family atmosphere that surrounds the team has helped foster a confident locker room. I mean, well, it starts with the owner, obviously. He sets the tone and tempo. You know, Mr. Richardson has these five core values that he has, and they're all spread out throughout the building. And you see them everywhere. Hard work, harmony, teamwork, listen, and respect. And if you can live your life within those five core values, you have, you have every opportunity to be part of our football team, of our organization. You know, Ron lives his life, life truthfully, and, and they see that and they, they respect that. Well, I think our locker room is filled with trust. I think our players uh, trust Coach Rivera. They know that he is, at the end of the day, he's interested in their development, and he's going to do things that are going to serve the best interest of our football team. Every single day he always stressed how important it is for us to realize that this is our locker room. It's about us and about what we do. And I think for players, we never lose sight of that. We understand that, you know, it really starts in the locker room. I like it when the players see me with my wife. I like them when they see me with my kids because I have to set the example. I treat my wife a certain way and they see it. 
that's okay to be like that when I'm with my daughter or my son, and it's okay to be like that with your kids, then, then hopefully it helps them. If, if you can keep balance in your life, I think it helps. Rivera is back in football mode, but that doesn't stop him from reflecting to what he learned from his family. From his All-American days at Cal to a Super Bowl as a player and his success as a head coach, it's been quite a journey. This has been amazing, you know, and I hope to keep it amazing. I really do. I've been very fortunate, very blessed, you know, and along the way, I've learned a lot of things. A lot of things have happened, a lot of positive things. I'm young, and I like to believe the journey's not even halfway done.